So if this were the number 1, that there would skip to the next line would be the number 3. The next line above that would skip to the next number, which would be the number 5. The next line above that would be the number 7. The next line above that would be the number 2. Then the number 4. And then here would be the number 6. And then all of a sudden, we're back to 1. And you can see with two ledger lines and one ledger line above, we go from 1 up to 1, from line to line. And this whole thing here is two octaves wide. So with the 11 note staff, the five lines and six spaces, I can create 11 notes. And by adding one ledger line on one end and two ledger lines on the other end, either way, I can create two octaves. So with two ledger lines on either side, I can create two octaves and two notes. And uh, if you play guitar, for instance, you're in the key of G, right down there, and you play across the guitar, the highest you can go till you get to the other side is exactly two octaves. And then you, on that top E string, you could run that out for about another five or six notes, and that's it. So you have a bandwidth of two and a half octaves for a melody. On a saxophone, you have you start at the low B flat, you work your way up to B flat, you go up to another B flat, you go a couple notes above that, and that's the entire range of the saxophone. A trumpet, tuba, only have 26 possible notes. 26, 24 would be two octaves. 12 into 12, 24 is two octaves, plus a couple notes. So that every musical instrument out there requires about a two octave bandwidth in order to notate its music. So this simple staff system can notate any musical instrument. And most singers cannot sing two octaves. If you can sing two octaves, you're a good singer. If you sing more than two octaves, you're Mariah Carey or Emo Sumac. Okay. But even to have two good octaves is great for a singer. So if someone comes to me and wants music lessons, I find the amateur can sing between five notes and seven notes. The average voice has about almost a one octave bandwidth. Then you have to learn to sing in your head and learn to sing in your chest to extend that. And then as you learn to relax and get better and better, the whole process of learning to sing is to learn to get a two octave range. Now I'll bet any of you here in this room that that little boy right there probably has naturally a two octave range. And as we get older, we unlearn <laughs> to use our vocal vocalization, and our bandwidth becomes tighter and tighter and smaller and smaller. If you listen to a baby cry, they can produce enough vocal sound to pierce an eardrum and to drive everybody out of a restaurant. Right? Yeah. But now, at your age, if you tried to yell that loud, you'd have to think about it, and you'd have to get all red in the face and try. <laughs> right? But a baby, newborn baby, a few months old, with a small pair of lungs, can out sing all of us. And that's because we are designed with a two octave range, and we try every sound possibility. Every pop and click and snap and bang and hum, and, you know, we try every, all these vocalizations, and we have what we call a very large vocal palette. And we try all these vocal palettes, and then what happens is if we learn a language, for instance, if I grow up in China, I'm going to eliminate certain sounds from my vocal palette and only use the vocal sounds that are used in the language that I grow up in. That's why you become a native speaker. And then if you want to learn, you, if you've been raised as an American and then you want to go out and learn Chinese, you're going to, there's some sounds in that language that you're going to have to learn all over again or redevelop. If you start a child out at a very young age and teach them seven languages, six or seven languages, by the time they get older, they can learn a new language like this and learn to sound like a native speaker almost immediately because they haven't lost that incredible vocal palette that they have. It, it doesn't, doesn't narrow itself down and become exclusive to one language or culture. And Angel and I did some research when we had a child and we found out if you learned Chinese, French, German, and English, you would have all of the vocal palettes that you would need to learn any other language on the planet Earth except for Swahili because they have a lot of pops and clicks that we don't use in other languages. Only Victor Borga uses that. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Anyway, you see what I'm getting at? So this system works for just about anything you're going to run into. Now what happens is, if one starts here on a line, the next time one pops up, one's going to pop up right here, between the 7 and 2. And you see it goes from a line to a space. And the reason it does that is because there's seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we start counting again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what happens is when we go from one to one, that eighth note winds up being the opposite of what we started with. So if one starts on the line, the next octave up, one will land on the space. Then if we go up another octave, guess what? It comes back to the line. Now once it comes back to the line, I can't tell this one from that one. And that, that's exactly, here, is exactly two octaves. And the whole system, no matter how much further I take it in either direction, just resets and does the whole thing over, the same pattern over and over and over. So I'm taking advantage of this and looking at every other note and finding out that this pattern comes up. And this pattern, by the way, can be used anywhere. Anywhere. Okay? If I'm going to, just quickly here, let's say that I make this line underneath here the number one. Then this line here is three, this line here is five, oops, <laughs> five, that's seven, two, four, and one above is six, and there's one again. Now, what I've just done is labeled all the lines. But if I take a look here, between the numbers one and three on this space would be the number two. Now if I want to go label all the spaces, turns out it's the same pattern. So this space would be two, that space would be four, that space would be six, that would be one, three, five, seven, two. And you see? It's the exact same pattern. So the interesting thing about this pattern is it works for all the lines and it works for labeling all the spaces. And it would work for any clef, anywhere, anytime. The only thing we need to know about it is where the hell does one start? <laughs> we need to know where one is, or we need to know any single number somewhere on the staff. If I can figure out some number somewhere on the staff, I can start doing this. Okay. So, the next thing we do is we look around and they have, I'm going to describe something that I didn't want to describe. 